Good evening, everybody. Big Mess, Mess of Branch Outdoors. And today, we're going to be tying a little bit of variation of a pheasant tail nymph that I like to fish this time of year and into fall. And the reason for that is we start to see these uh, stonefly shuck cases out there in about this size, which is a size 12. But I add a little bit of flash to it, change the materials up a little bit. It's a cool thing about fly tying, right? You can be the Bob Ross. This is your canvas. So I'm going to take a swig of water and we're going to get started. And by the way, if you made it this far, you're one of the few, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And if you want to share the video, feel free to do so. So in my Norvice Legacy C, Legacy C Blue fly tying system, I'm going to insert a size 12 nymph hook with a 760 forks size B, which fits this hook pretty good. Feel free to do it in a 12 and a 14. I don't know if I go on a 10 to this variation here or if I'd go down to a 16, I might do that in a different version. I am gonna be using some brown thread and I'm gonna start about halfway back on the hook shank. I'm gonna break that off. Then I'm gonna use the rotating feature of my Norvice. I'm gonna come back here to this particular point. Now here we have two options when it comes to a tail. We can do your traditional pheasant tail material or as I like to do in some cases, for a little bit more tractability is I will use some um, flashy material in this case here this happens to be red and that's what we're going to do on this particular variation but you can do whatever you'd like to do so to do that I need to get some of that body material and please excuse me I thought I still had it out but I didn't so I want to pull a little bit of that off and this is just some uh, midge body thread there's all different manufacturers who make this pretty cool stuff so use what you would like to use What I like to do is take this and we'll double it over a couple of times. You can go with a thinner version tail or you can go with a thicker, totally up to you. I'm gonna take the two strands. I'm gonna wrap it around my thread. I'm gonna set this on top of the hook and we're gonna secure that down just like so, just like that. Now I'm gonna come with my scissors. I'm gonna trim it. Remember when you trim it, you can always come back and cut it again, but you can't add link to it. And I got enough left over here for another tail. So real easy to do. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select some pheasant tail fibers. I'm gonna go with natural uh, on this particular one here, but you can do black, you can do I think there's olive. You certainly could do um, yellow if you wanted to. All those would be excellent choices. And it's going to pull off a few fibers to make that body. We're going to tie this in by the tips. And the reason why we're doing that, we're going to get thicker as we go forward. So I'm going to snip those off, spin my thread counterclockwise, or my bobbin, I should say. I want to come in with a nice little loose wrap. I want to capture that. I'm just going to wrap forward just like that. And the one thing I almost forgot to do was tie in a rib. And we could have already done that, but that's okay. For the rib, we're going to use the same material we used for our tail, which is the, what we call body, midge body thread. This just happens to be red. I'm a fan of the red. I think it does well. Fish like it. That's all that matters. Once again, counterclockwise, coming into your living room or your iPhone or your electronic device. And I'm going to come up here about where I need this to end because I want to keep some room for that next material. That's just going to give me a stopping point. At this point here, I want to grab these pheasant tail fibers and I'm just going to rotate this forward just like so. Pretty standard at this point, right? Everything's going to be the same. I'm going to bring my thread off of the holder over here, my Norvice. I want to capture that momentarily, come into your living room once again. Got it. Boom, boom, boom. I want to lift it up and I'm going to get rid of those. I will secure it with a half hitch. Just like this, I want to put my thread back on that post. I like to cord up or twist the rib material and then I'm just going to go counter wrap it and I'm going to bring that up like so and there we go. So we've counter wrapped that. Come in here we're going to capture just basic fly time principles at this point. That's all we're going to do. We got that secured, tie it off, little half hitch. I do my half hitches this way. I've seen others do them different ways. It's pretty cool. So for a wing case, we have an option as well. 
So for instance here, I will show you, here's your pheasant tail wing case, but we are actually going to do a flashback material wing case on it there. Once I find it, it's like this here, just like so. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take our Mirage tinsel here, our flash, call it many different things. So we're gonna grab that. We're gonna lay that up here on top. We're gonna to tie that in. So I like to let it rotate there. Really gonna secure that down really well, just like that. And then the next material we wanna tie in, which is pretty cool stuff, is going to be, it's from Simperfly. It's gonna be some synthetic peacock curl it's black peacock and it's in a two millimeter, which is a 0.078 inch. So what I like to do is I like to keep it in my waste basket and I'm going to strip off a little bit of that material from the end there, expose the core and give me a great tie in point. It's like so. Counterclockwise, I'm going to grab that, secure that down. Boom. All right. Cool. I want to come in here, put in a half hitch and we are almost done. All we gotta do at this point is I'm going to take a little hair clip, put that over there, and I'm just gonna wrap this up. So as you can tell, a lot of this fly is some synthetics along with a natural material, which is a nice thing about fly time materials today. We have a lot of options to really suit your needs, of course. Now, I'm a huge fan of natural peacock curl. I think it's great, but at the end of the day, sometimes even making a rope uh, it may not be the best. Or if you're in a hurry and you want a little bit more flexibility, then maybe this is the way to go for you. So I wanna pull this guy over. I'm not putting any legs on it. Keeping it really simple here. When you are, go through a lot of flies like this by chance, maybe you're guiding or you're nymphing and, and you lose some flies, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time on tying flies. I spend most of my time as much as I can on the water or improving myself by reading the water, uh, understanding hook sets, strike detection is where I would go with it. So we're going to put a couple of whip finishes in here. And then all we got to do at this point is put a little bit of UV resin or some head cement. Either way, you're good to go. I'm going to come in. I'm going to trim that thread off. And that's all there is to it. So a few of the fly time principles that you have here. Uh, with this combined uh, new technology as well as old materials to come together to make a uh, bug that catches fish. You could look at this in a couple of different ways. You could look at this as a small stonefly imitation. You could look at this as a small uh, mayfly imitation. Works really well here in Western North Carolina. Our public waters as well as our Great Smoky Mountain National Park and National Forest waters works really good. The other thing I want to point out to this particular fly uh, in maybe comparison maybe to another stonefly type pattern is if we notice on this particular body yeah, it's got a pretty thin profile and the, the reason why that can be important is uh, with this lower profile what will happen is here we have less resistance because we've got a slimmer profile um, so is, is your fishing maybe a little bit faster water um, at times, this can cut through that water column a little bit better than maybe even a fatter or you think is a heavier fly. The great compliment to this here is using a little bit of tungsten putty, which I like to do to really dial, dial in the depth of where this fly needs to go. So, hey, look, that's all there is to it. Really do appreciate folks for watching and commenting. Let us know where you're from. Let us know some of the colors that you're fishing in your particular area. Thank you folks that have been watching the creek side, uh, uh, the creek talk. Uh, there's more of those to come and got a pretty cool other video coming up about the setter hatchery for the delayed harvest season here in western North Carolina. You're definitely going to want to watch that. Subscribe to us. We appreciate you folks. We'll catch you next week. Y'all take care.